Folks, welcome back. We've got something pretty special here on the bench today, and that is this MSI GTX 980 Ti Gaming X Golden Edition. I, th I think that I think I got that right. It's a mouthful. Uh, but this is a pretty special card, in, in part because it's one of MSI's more robust 980 Ti designs, uh, but also because, as you can maybe see through the, the fan blades here, this has a copper heatsink, which is pretty unusual in this part of the 2000s. You used to see copper heat sinks on, on graphics cards every once in a while, but they stopped doing that because there's so much material in them now that it makes them awfully expensive. And this card was no exception. As I recall, this was one of the most expensive 980 Ti's you could get. But we've got one on the bench today, and as you might expect, it doesn't work. So we're going to take a look at this card, and hopefully we can figure out at least why it failed, and maybe we can also get it working. I don't have tremendously high hopes for this one but it's worth a shot. So, what the previous owner told me was that the, the card will simply not allow the, the system to power up. If you, you plug it in and you turn the system on, you just get nothing. Now, what's actually happening in that case, most likely, is that it's tripping the overcurrent protection on the system's power supply, uh, which is, is basically, if you have a short to ground on one of the 12 volt rails, the uh, PCIe power over here, the power supply will automatically just shut off in order to prevent overheating and damaging itself. So I suspect that what we have is a short to ground on the 12 volt input pins somewhere over in this part of the card. Now, as a result of that, I haven't attempted to actually run this card yet. If I had, the potential exists to damage my power supply or my, my motherboard or to damage the card worse. And I don't want to do do anything to it to make it worse until I'm, I'm sure I know what the problem is. If the short is through the board, there's really nothing we can do. But if the short is through certain other components, it may be directing all 12 volts to the GPU die. Now, it's possible for the GPU to have survived that once or twice, but it's unlikely that it would survive repeated attempts for that. Nevertheless, we're gonna do our best to save this card. So let's get started. So the first thing we wanna do is test for a short to ground on our 12 volt power ring. On this card, we've got the latch on this side, which means that, hang on a second here. All right, those of you who are followers of the channel may recognize this card here. This is the 290X we repaired in the last episode, and I've got it on the bench here to help orient us with respect to our power connectors on our patient card. So. We know because we can measure for resistance on these pins, which ones are the 12 volts. So if we, if we measure here, we get thousands of ohms there, whereas this row is ground. So we get zero. See that? Zero. Okay, this is a healthy card. So we know that in this row, what we're looking for is ground. And in this row, what we're looking for is a few thousand ohms. So if we go to our patient card here, 700, that's, this 750-ish is a little troubling, but maybe, maybe there's actually a 750 ohm resistor in there somewhere. Current monitoring maybe? 750, that looks okay. 700-ish, also maybe okay. Thousands, and zero. I think that's okay. There's one of these pins that's a sense pin and isn't actually used as a ground. I'm pretty sure it's that one. If we check this one, I think we should get the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Now, so what we learned is we've got the proper-ish resistance to ground on this row, and we've got ground on this row, except for our sense pin. So that connector looks, looks okay. So now let's move on to this one here. See what we got. Ah, see that? So we've got one ohm. That's way different from 750, which we had on this connector. If we probe this one, do we have the same thing? We should have the same thing on all three of the 12 volt pins on this connector, because they're all wired together usually. Yep. Zero. Okay. So. This connector looks fine. This one, however, we've got proper resistance on the sense lines, but 
what we're missing is we don't have resistance on our 12 volt pins, which is these three right here, which is the cause of the reported overcurrent protection that our previous owner mentioned. So now we need to figure out why that is. And in order to do that, we need to take the card apart and get a look at the board, particularly kind of in this area where the 12 volt rail is. So let's put our healthy 290X away and get on with disassembling this guy. folks it's been a couple of days because i had to set this aside but as we can see we now have our heat sink off and we've got the core or the card tor torn down and it's immediately apparent where our problem lies and that's right here on our number five v core phase where we can see that this trace actually got so hot that it appears that it's starting to delaminate from the board right there that's not a good sign before we go to the process through the process of removing our short by removing some of these components and hopefully that's where our short is we need to check what the resistance from our, our output side of the vrm is to ground and to our 12 volt rail so we have some idea what happened to the core if this just shorted to ground and the reason that this got hot was all the current passing from here at the connector through there to ground then our core is probably okay and we may be able to repair this if this got hot because it shorted to the core through the core, then to ground, uh, supplying 12 volts through the core, then there's basically no chance at all that our core is gonna be good. And we wanna know that ahead of time because if we plug this in and nothing happens, we need to know, do we need to troubleshoot something else or is it just a dead core? So what we're gonna do is measure from the output side of our VRM to ground, and that'll tell us the resistance ostensibly through the core. And what we get 1.1 ohms. So that seems a little low to me, but what you're looking for on that rail is low single digits. So, you know, maybe two to five ohms. With a die this big, 1.1 is not out of the question though. So it's possible that's okay. Unfortunately, I have a feeling if we do this, and now what I'm testing is the resistance between our plus 12 volts and our output of our VRM. Come on. We've got zero. So we have a dead short from our 12 volt input to the rail that our, v our uh, GPU core lives on. That is really bad. What that means is that something melted and directly connected our GPU core to the 12 volt power supply. And 12 volts is way too high for the GPU core. And as a result, there's a good chance that this core is dead. But we're going to give it a shot anyway. Uh, something else that could have happened is if this dual NFET package melted, there's, there's six, there's six terminals, I think, on this NFET package. One connects to here, the 12 volts. One connects to our uh, phase driver over here uh, for the high side. One connects to our GPU, and another connects to ground and the, and a the last one to the phase driver. So if all of those got melted together, it's possible that it killed our phase driver or something else, but if they all melted together and connected it to ground, then that would explain why we got this burn section because we had a ton of energy flowing through this little trace. And it also gives us a shot that maybe our GPU is not bad. We don't know until we remove this and, uh, test the resistances. If the resistance through the core goes up once we remove that, as it should, then chances are, well, we, we, we've got a shot anyway. So now we need to go ahead and start removing these. And for that, I need my hot air station.
Okay. We've got our obviously destroyed components off of the board now. And we just need to clean these pads up so that we're sure that there's no solder or anything where there shouldn't be. Then we can let the board cool down and do some resistance checks to see if we've actually cleared our short. If we try to do it now, we'll probably get zero resistance through the core just because it's hot, and that's what happens when the core gets hot. All right, guys. A few minutes later, and I've got some good news, and I've got bad news. Good news first. Check this out. So on our core rail, we've got three-ish ohms through the core. That's much more in line with what we would expect the resistance through a IC of this size to be when it's turned off. So that's good. It actually means that the core could be okay. And if we can figure out a way to clear the short um, in our 12 volt power rail, we might even be able to power the, this up and have it work. However, we've got another problem. Check this out. So on our 12 volt rail, we've still got zero. All right, folks, I'm ashamed to admit I lost the subsequent couple of minutes of footage, but the good news is you didn't miss much unless you wanted to see my receding hairline. I think we're going to have to call this card dead. So if I kept at it long enough, I'm sure we could clear the short here by grinding a hole in the PCB. You'll see here we're already up to 30-ish ohms just by peeling the layers back. See that? 30-ish ohms. But no matter what we did, I don't think we would ever get this card working. Let me show you why. This here is our dual NFET package that I removed from this spot on the board. And this terminal on it is our 12 volt terminal. And this terminal here is connected to our GPU directly through uh, the coil. So it connects to the board and there's a little trace and it goes into the coil and then from the coil basically directly to the GPU. And if we put our, pro our probes on it, we take a resistance measurement, what we get is zero ohms. So this is basically just a wire from the 12 volts to the GPU. And 12 volts is 10 to 12 times what the operating voltage is, and that would definitely destroy this GPU. So there's a very, very good chance that this GPU is hosed anyway. And the damage to the board that we see here is secondary. Basically, we had so much current flowing through it that it overheated our traces, and not this having been the cause of that. So we're going to set this aside and say that this is now a parts card. But before we go, I want to talk about why that happened. If we look at our, our NFET package here, we can see we've got this extra terminal that's not connected to the major power inputs and outputs, and that's called the gate. And what that does is it accepts a voltage, and it turns what's basically a switch on inside there when you have a voltage on it. But if you don't supply enough voltage, the switch doesn't turn all the way on. And when that happens, you burn off a lot of energy as heat, which, if you have a low enough voltage, becomes uncoolable. And that's when you get these MOSFETs failing. Now, what can cause that voltage to be low is a weak power supply. So you could think of this as probably a two-stage problem. One is, I suspect there was some aggressive overclocking going on. The other issue is a weak power supply that doesn't provide the full 12 volts. And if your card design supplies 12 volts on the gate pin from the power supply and not through a secondary regulator, this is what can happen. So as your piece of actionable information from this video and your reward for having watched a 15 minute video of me not repairing a graphics card, check the voltage of your power supply while it's running a game. And if it's dropping down into the mid 11s, 11 and a half, consider yourself lucky that it hasn't killed your graphics card already and replace it. Anyway, I think we're going to have to close this one out because I don't see there being much of a way to save this thing other than using it for parts. But as always, I hope you found this interesting or at least helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.